week on Top Billing. Africa's most lauded knitwear designer, Latuma Ngogolo, reveals his colorful new range. Actress Mishka Patipal invites us on set of her new movie, Keeping Up with the Kundasamis. We catch up with brothers Johnny, Jesse, Daniel and Dylan, who make up homegrown rock band The Congos. Experience the castle that inspired acclaimed sculptor Adrian Diedrichs as a child. Enjoy a closer style picnic with hit musicians Vusi Nova and Nati getting together on their chart-topping hit Nomaganjani and bring you the scandal behind the wedding of high rollers Tulula Nichols and Ben King. Your presenter tonight, Roxy Berger, comes to you from a character-filled Africa meets Bali style family home on a tranquil nature reserve in Durban. Good evening and welcome to the best of the good life and to spring. Now nothing announces the season of things fresh and new quite like a stirring fashion week collection and La Duma Ngokolo has answered the call, bringing his signature patterns to a fabulous range of golf shirts and crewnecks. Africa's most celebrated knitwear designer, La Duma Kokolo's new spring summer collection, recently turned heads at the Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week in Joburg. Brother, congratulations on a fantastic show. What was it like getting a shout out from Beyonce? I felt very excited. I saw a tweet in the morning, uh, someone tweeting about it, and I was like, nah, this can't be real. And then ended up in a blog uh, where she posted a small write-up of my collection of Spring Summer 2016. And um, I think that has opened up opportunities for me, not just in the international scene, also locally. A lot of ladies are getting to notice what I do and appreciating it. You perhaps see signs of African fashion influencing global trends? The theme behind my collection is appropriation. Appropriation is, is one of the trendy topics in the fashion community, in the media. People mainly comment negatively about it, where mainstream brands take some of our culture and use them and not credit where they get the culture from. But I look at um, appropriation in a sense that we also appropriate the classic pieces that we wear uh, from the West. And I chose today to celebrate that cultural exchange by dominating classic pieces like cardigans, crewnecks, with traditional beadwork pattern, which I took from a traditional Khosa necklace, which we call Isitang. Uh, Isitang is, is, is a necklace that sits around the neck, uh, which can be seen from Egyptians to the Messiah and various other cultures in Southern Africa. Can you take us through some of the looks? Dave here is wearing a cardigan, which is made out of 100% cotton. Beach shorts, good essential to wear in November, December, here in South Africa. And a uh, beautiful lady wearing a tasseled golf shirt. Just introduced tassels into my pieces now. And uh, she's wearing a mini short, which I think could be hot for summer. Titled Mtonankuba, Laduma's collection was inspired by darker skin tones set off by brights and pastels to celebrate diversity. I think Laduma's show was amazing. I mean, I've been following his work since the time he started his design. I mean, I was in high school with him, so it was quite a privilege for me to actually witness his work and his talent, being a global artist as well. And I feel like there's more that's coming. I think African fashion right now is everything. It's, it's so exciting, it's where everything's happening. You know, it's where people are coming out and owning their, their cultures and traditions in a really beautiful, beautiful way. It's not just South Africa that's in love with his talent. He sent his collection down the runway on Africa Fashion Day at Berlin Fashion Week. A creative showcase for all things African, it connects our continent's best designers with a European market that's hungry for a taste of our homegrown flair. Something La Duma serves up in style. You won the 2015 Vogue Italia Scouting for Africa Award. How's that impacted your career? I actually got an opportunity to travel to Italy, to Milan, fashion capital of Europe. Uh, I grew up buying GQ magazines and Vogue Italia and uh, menswear magazines from, from Italy. 
And uh, I appreciated fashion since then and I appreciated how the Italians pay attention to clothes. And I got to experience to be within the market and actually learned a lot from them, from the business of fashion uh, in Italy. Congratulations, man. Like Beyonce, I think you're going to be taking over the world. I found this on stage. I hope you don't mind me keeping it as a souvenir. <laughs> Thank you, bro. It's yours. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again, man. Cheers. Thank sweet, you so sweet. much. One of Laduma's knitted shawls won the Design in Darba's Most Beautiful Object in South Africa Award. Offshore, his creations are also objects of desire and are sold in Japan as well as online via a London-based boutique. Spring has definitely sprung and that man's talent is in full bloom. If you could do with a thousand rand cash prize to get your fresh new idea noticed, then be sure to look out for tonight's Top Hat. Tell us where on our Facebook and Twitter competition posts after the show and you stand a chance of winning. Up next, we visit actress Mishka Patipal on set for her new movie and check in with SA-born rock band The Congos. Every generation has a band of sisters or brothers who define the music of that period. And as far as indie rock in 2016 goes, one name that keeps coming up is Congos. Four brothers in one band, born in the RSA and making it big in the USA. While they've lived in Arizona since 1996, brothers Johnny, Jesse, Daniel and Dylan grew up between London and South Africa. The sons of South African singer-songwriter John Congos, the band recently returned to SA to tour and headline at local rock festival Opi Kopi. Welcome back to South Africa, gents. You guys didn't waste any time. You got straight into it. Yeah. yeah. Game drive, how was it? Oh, it was incredible. It was one of the best game viewing experiences we've ever had. And we did a bunch of stuff in Joburg too. We were, you know, we were hanging out for a good week, and then now we got to work. Now we're doing shows and everything else. You guys have been very successful, both locally as well as internationally. But what keeps you coming back to South Africa? Well, growing up here, obviously there's nostalgia. We know we love the country, and we come back. I think we've been back every year since 2012. Yeah. yeah. See friends, a lot of friends here. I know what. And then the people, and then also we've been dying to do some shows here because. We toured Lunatic relentlessly in South Africa and we wanted to wait until we had something new to play to people rather than just beating them over the head with the old stuff. One of their biggest hits, Come With Me Now, went double platinum in both the US Come and with Canada. Me now. Come with me now. You know you've made it when your hit song, Come With Me Now, is the theme song on a video game, WWE, as well as The Expendables. How did this all happen? That song, you know, uh, it took us maybe four or five years to get it going. We recorded it in 2010. And then 2014, all of a sudden, radio picked it up in America. And then the sync started to come in, and it was, I think, one of the most synchronized songs of that year is in a million things so uh, it's one of those good problems you know where everyone knew the song but they didn't necessarily know who the band was and uh, we're, we're trying to connect that now to you know the rest of the story when the big one finally hits LA when Yellowstone has its day we're heading to the southern tip on a plane or on a ship we'll do what it takes we'll find a way being Blood Brothers, is there any sibling rivalry and how have you guys managed to stay together? We only have sibling rivalry about dumb stuff. You know, when it comes to important stuff like the, the band or songs or songwriting, uh, we pretty much are on the same page. You know, and if we're not, then we find a good way to work it out. But dumb stuff like, you know, who's late or who gets the bunk, this bunk in the bus or... Who gets like, to wear a black shirt. Yeah. <laughs> we have a one tank top rule. You, only one person in the band can wear a tank top on any one show because more than one and you start to look like a tank top band. Back. 
Egomaniac is a really great album. Can you tell us about it? Well, it's the new album. Um, it's our third studio album. And uh, yeah, we kind of started writing a bunch of songs um, during the Lunatic cycle when Lunatic wasn't really taking off for us around the rest of the world. We started to work on some new material and uh, we're eventually going to move on to it. But then Come With Me Now took off. So we kind of put it on the back burner. And uh, then we came to the table with like 30 or 40 songs and um, some of them showed or a lot of them showed this theme of egomania which is what allowed us to kind of pick the songs for this album. What exactly inspires your sound? Because when that accordion kicks in, I mean, I hear a truly South African sound, almost a bit of Mpankanga in there, hey? That's definitely a large part of it. Um, yeah, Maskandi, everything you can think of like that. Um, Beyond that, there's just an endless list of music that we grew up listening to that comes out in one way or another. Even if you don't hear it, you know, Jesse you know, loved Eric Satie, a piano composer, so on some of the softer stuff, maybe you'll hear some harmony like that. It's not necessarily easy to pinpoint what the influence is. Well, you guys are certainly well on your way, but before we kick it, I want to see if you remember any of your South African handshakes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you got to go. Oh, bro, it. No, what's happening there? What's happening? You remember it? Uh, there's so many of them. Oh, okay, there's <laughs> many of them. Let's see. This, this I missed you. Oh, I don't know that one. Question. Hang on. This is, can we just <laughs> do that? When we left, it was still can this. Can we do that? That is that the one? That's, that's, that's yeah. like plain and simple. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, when you left, it was like that. Yeah, and then, yeah. Oh, then you add here? There we okay, go, yeah, that's yeah. it, guys. I like the plain one. Plain one. Yeah. Just that. Yeah. Come on. I like the yeah. thumb thing. You, gotta, you, like you always miss the thumb. I always you do. miss the thumb. You do. <laughs> Have a good time, gents. Good to have you back. Thanks, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Good good You need talent and a sense of humour to survive in showbiz, and those boys have both. As does South African Indian screen siren Mishka Patipal, whose latest romantic comedy pokes some much needed fun at reality TV royalty in keeping up with the Kandasamis. You've seen her in films like White Gold and Rites of Passage, as well as TV shows like SABC, Skim Sam and Snake Park. But now the Durban-born actress is back in her hometown filming the big screen comedy. Mishka, as an actor to an actor, I know that it's something that you can't escape, but how did you realize this dream? Well, actually, I started off studying law. Um, at university, my parents really wanted me to be a lawyer and I was absolutely miserable. I was sleeping all the time, I didn't want to go to lectures and my dad was getting so fed up with me. And then I just managed to convince him to please let me study drama. Um, yeah, and then I started studying drama at UKZN and as soon as I graduated, I was like, Joburg is calling my name. You gotta tell me why it is that you went for this role. Well, I knew this was gonna be a really big um, feature film and I just couldn't let the opportunity pass me by. Um, there's hardly any roles that are for girls my age and my race, so how could I not? Now, nobody really sees the kind of process that you go through. <laughs> Everybody sees the end result and they always think that it's so glamorous and glitzy, but how did you end up getting this role? Well, um, I heard that they were having auditions in Durban and I gave production a call and said, hey, are you guys having auditions in Joburg? And they said, no. So then I was like, okay. So I jumped in my car and I drove six hours to the audition. A month went by, I didn't hear anything. And then I got a phone call from production saying, I have a call back. And then that was it. Tell me about your character in this film. Well, I play Jodie Kandasamy, and she is the only daughter of Jennifer and Elvis Kandasamy. Jodie is carefree and fun-loving. She doesn't give a damn. Um, yeah, and she falls head over heels in love with her neighbor, and her mother doesn't like it at all. So it's a young love story, almost like Romeo and Juliet. The neighbor that you're talking about actually played with you in White Gold. Yeah, uh, Madhushan Singh. 
Um, I played opposite with him and we traveled to India actually to shoot White Gold and yeah, I'm so excited to be working with him again. He's absolutely amazing. So we're shooting in Durban and we've been shooting specifically in Chatsworth, which is an Indian area in Durban. So we're only using Chatsworth locations. We just want South Africa to see that this is a Durban film made by Durbanites. And we just want to showcase our Indian culture. Mishka loves the great outdoors, especially the beach, and filming in Durban allows her to do some of her favorite things, early morning cycling or running on the boardwalk before cooling off in the Indian Ocean. You're one of the most beautiful girls in the country. Thank you. Only a pleasure, <laughs> only a pleasure. What beauty tips do you have for those who want to look as good as you do? I think to have healthy skin, you have to eat properly and drink a lot of water and just have enough sleep and rest your skin. We see on Instagram, social media, all the girls just wear so much makeup. I just think it's so unnecessary to do so. Well, it's so bad for your skin, actually. There's very few people out there as fortunate as you. Is that all it takes? I'm lucky enough to have very good genes. I thank my father for them that I can eat whatever I want and look like this. <laughs> in Mishka's perfect dream world. Now remember, anything is possible in this world. What would you still like to achieve? I would love to act with Anthony Hopkins. That would just be a dream. Um, I would love for Chris Hemsworth or Joe Manganiello to rescue me. Oh, when I heard Chris there, I thought you were almost talking about me. So I'm feeling uh, like chopped no liver such, here. No such luck. No so, such luck. No such luck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you can't get enough of Mishka, keep an eye out for keeping up with the Kundasamis. There's a face to watch, and the fact that it's such a beautiful one makes it all the easier to do. Not so, gentlemen. Stay tuned to visit the castle that inspired talented sculptor Adrian Diedrichs before hitting the trail on horseback with Musos Vusi and Nati and exploring a home with a holiday feeling in Durban. Not everyone gets to grow up in a castle, especially in the West Coast's Piketberg Mountains. It's the kind of out-of-the-box upbringing you'd expect to create an exceptional human being, and that it has, in the form of acclaimed sculptor Adrian Diedrichs. Before studying fine art in Stellenbosch, Adrian lived in Piketberg, where his family converted a castle into a guest house. Now 25, he's one of SA's most prolific sculptors. Hard to believe he once considered becoming a dentist. So this is the castle where I grew up. The one guy used to come visit always and tell me about dragons and bring stones from the mines, so a red, a blue and a green stone in the shape of a dragon egg. And I would sit for hours waiting for these things to hatch at the fire stove. His already vivid imagination flourished and formed the foundation of his creative development. This is such a magical place to grow up in. I could see how your imagination would develop. As a child, you always fuel your imagination with anything that's in your environment. So I often used to play in the garden, play between moss and stones, building things, giving it to my parents as gifts, making my own toys. And all of those things I think you re-emulate later on in your life. He served his apprenticeship with artist and sculptor Lionel Smith, who he cites as one of his biggest inspirations. He now has his own studio in Strand, in which he expresses his artistic vision. So today you're going to actually help me a bit in the studio. Here's a pair of gloves. Usually I use plaster scene or wood. The wood I salvage from forests or from ships. And the reason why I use it is because they have a lot of water that draws to the sand there. So often the wood is quite rotten and it allows for me to not have control because I like having control usually. Here's some plaster scene that I've prepared and you can paint this onto the sculpture for me. Okay, I really don't want to mess this up so explain to me exactly what I have to do. Don't worry, you can just apply it. Okay. What can you tell me about the sculpture? So this piece I will usually start working on something and I'll let the process kind of guide me. So things that look a bit redundant I'll start removing and things that I feel needs to be added I'll add. If it's too controlled I'll sometimes even throw the sculpture over. What do you mean you throw it over? 
So at, when I started by Lionel, I couldn't really sculpt, and under the guidance of him, I was able to learn to sculpt classically. But often I find that it addresses a sense of emotion within a person that you kind of feel accomplished once it's perfect. So to get away from it, I'll throw it over or I'll break pieces off and lose control of the piece so that the piece gets its own voice. When it comes to casting his artworks, Adrian doesn't do it alone. He has a talented and experienced team who help him bring his sculptures to life. Hi, Victoria. I know you're not just applying wax randomly. There's an art to it. Yeah, it needs a specialized skill for you to do this because you have to get the sizes of it right because if you don't get it right, the hair bronze will end up being too heavy for it. So your waxes have to be hot so that it captures all the textures that are in this rubber. It has to come out as it is, as how the artist has done it. Adrian's creations have been exhibited both at home and away, from the Everard Reed Gallery in Cape Town to Art Fair Cologne in Germany and Art Fair Strasbourg in France. Jalil, you've been doing this for 16 years. I believe there's quite a science behind it. Being a metal cast is, is quite unique. It's a trade on its own. It's a lot of mathematics, science, you name it. Ratios, formulas, you have to have it put on. So what happens is, we use silica, 4% of silica, with 1% of manganese flakes, and 95% copper. Then you have your silicon bronze. Once the pot is ready and on temperature, we degas to take all the impurities out. We use a thing that's called fossil waffle plate. It's a complex process, but these various additives help improve the quality of the bronze. Why did you throw glass bottles in the mix? We need to put glass bottles in there just to help to take the slag off. Uh, then we get ready for the casting. Your ceramic molds must be glowing hot. In your metal, you take it close to 1200 and then you pour it into your molds, and that's it. When it comes to casting, you get one shot to do it right. If it's not right, you have to start the process from all over again, which is quite <laughs> costly. <laughs> it takes a while for the metal to cool down. Spraying the mold with water speeds it up. So this is one of the coolest parts of the process. So these are the shells we casted just now. We're going to unwrap the presents and see what we have inside. Jade may not be a multi-award winning sculptor, but as it turns out, she's pretty good with a hammer. This is awesome, check out the foot. Once the sculpture emerges, finishing touches are added and made permanent via welding before it's sealed with color enhancing techniques. What is happening at this stage? This is the patination stage. This helps with the preservation of the sculpture to age more beautifully. Some of the statues overseas and locally have these green lines on them. That's a form of decay or deterioration due to oxidization on the surface. Usually the sculptures all have a various chemical layers like this that build up and after that it will be waxed which seals it. His gallery above the workshop shows off his imaginative creations. Adrian, your work is perfection and you've achieved all of this at 25. Would you say your studies equipped you for your professional career? I think that from a conceptual level it's definitely helped and inspired a lot of pieces. Learning how to look at theory, how to incorporate theory, psychoanalysis, all these things. What is the groundwork within your art? For artists usually a lot of your work is personal and it's very, it's an extraction of yourself or extension of yourself. For me, I try to make it exciting, always challenge myself. That's very important. Um, to constantly push the boundaries and exceed to continue growing as a person within your work, but also to let your work have its own voice at the end of the day. Are there any elements from your childhood that are still prevalent in your artwork? I often use the man, the ship, the horse, and I can construct narratives. So it's pretty much, I would say, on a similar scale as when I was a child, taking sticks, stones, constructing narratives, building things showing my parents mythological things, intertwining everything that I feel is a part of being a child at the moment is just a bit more on a grandiose scale, but still playing, ultimately. It's this sense of playful joy that makes his masterpieces so unique. If 
it took a castle to unlock Adrian's childhood imaginings and determinations, then it was a meeting of minds between Vusinova and Nati that in the last year produced some of this country's most exceptional music. Producer Lance Stir tells the story. Vusi Nova is no stranger to the charts, and when he teamed up with newcomer Nati Mankai, they made musical dynamite. Lance, you have two phenomenal artists here. What do you think it is about this duo that just works? Initially, I, I really wasn't going to work with Nati because um, I'd heard the song, we're busy on Vusi's album. Vusi's album was our focus, so we didn't really have the capacity to do two artists. And then it was Vusi that heard Nati, and he said, no, we've got to find him, and that's how it happened in there. Vusi and Nati's musical bromance resulted in the chart-topping hit Noma Ganjani, the first single from Nati's best-selling debut album, Buyele Kaya, that quickly went double platinum. The two of you share a very special bond, and I believe there's quite an interesting way in how you met. Well, I, I, I heard um, Unum Vua, his, his, his big song, um, Usipo was playing in our, in our offices and I walked over to him and I was like, who is this? And he was like, Munati from Maclea in the Eastern Cape. Uh, and I was like, we need to find this guy's number. And Usipo had the number, so I took the number from him, I called Nati, um, we spoke a bit. Um, and, and yeah, the rest is history, so they say. Nati, what was that like, getting a call from, I guess, a complete stranger wanting to do music with you? It's some years so when it comes to music and I guess friends, you have quite a brotherly love thing going. I think it's music. Um, I think if it wasn't for music, we would have never met, first of all. Um, I think we're totally two different people, um, but when it comes to Umgulo, we're so similar in so many ways. So I, I feel like easy though that you go through um, growing up and all of that. Um, I, and I, can, I speak for myself and for Nati as well, because I know Nati speaks about and sings about things that have happened Ebu Minibak. And that's what I've decided to do with my album now as well. So I think Ezo Zindo Ezo connect. I know South African men love to eat, particularly Kosa men, so I've got a special meal plan for you. Yeah, we so love meat. When it comes to meat or food, ask me anything. Let's go, guys. The guys were in for a real treat. Wandi Ndala himself, of the much-loved Wandi's restaurant in Soweto, had prepared a few of his favorite dishes to create a traditional Kosa-inspired picnic. But Wandi, I'm so excited to see what you have prepared for these gentlemen. Well, uh, Ngosho, because Kosa is called Semp Ngosho, and uh, it's, they have Semp, it's brown. That's Kosa tradition. You can also have it white, right? You can have white, uh, Zulu like white. Yes. And then Kosa like brown. And then there's dumpling. That is our traditional food also, both Zulus and Kosa. It's so delicious, so nice. I like not dependent. Dumpling's my favorite. The spinach there, which is the most favorite for everybody in our country. It's like a staple food. And there's a Kosa chicken, the omelette. And then the chakalak, chakalak, just to keep, you know, your taste buds, you know, Alive. running. Exactly. And I think bon appetit. Nasty Bussi, are you guys ready? Because I'm so hungry. We've been waiting. We're so hungry right now. Well, come in and dig in, gentlemen. Ah, finally. A multi-talented man, Nati's also a keen sketch artist and would like to try a bit of acting. Vusi wants to help other artists just as he's done with Nati. What I love about the both of you, particularly you Nati, is that you've stuck to your guns about celebrating South African heritage through music. <laughs> So, 
yona ndo engi tata ngoba iskumbuze maka istatis bega po suga kona. Wusi, you decided to do your latest album in purely East Kosa, and I know that Nati played a huge role in that. No, definitely. I mean, I f and I keep on saying that Unati has definitely um, inspired me. That's why Lenai album is, is a bit different from all the rest, because I'm articulating myself in the language. I'm so and, and, and people connect to that. It's been quite interesting to see how the two of you interact. You almost have this elderly brother, younger brother type of relationship. Um, <laughs> and, 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 now, and now and again, I think he tries to remind me, like I said, in Tarak now, you know, so. Yeah, I've never got to bond him. What are some of the things you've learned from each other? Um, I think some of the things I've learned from each other is that I've learned from each other. I've learned from each other. Is it because I'm not, so, Putting out there what mm. we feel mm. other people want. Mm. I feel like we, 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 we do that a lot as people. And that's another thing I've learned from Unati. To just be yourself. You know, nothing beats being you. I have my two favorite artists here today with me. It's a beautiful day in Johannesburg, lovely picnic. We've eaten amazing food. True. You're not going anywhere until, or we're not going anywhere, until a little serenade. For me. Shall we do um, shall we do the good time dealer? Caesar. Digutandile standwasa. Gentlizi oyami yonke. Dichutandwe dinalo. So the lupele. To Lisile, Utatum Pefum Loa, me to Lisile Ebo Sugunemi Dipu Pangawe to Lisile Utatum Pefum Loa. Whether you're born into a band of brothers or become family through a shared love of rhythm and blues, the result is the same. Fantastic South African music. Next up, take a peek inside an unusual African Balinese style home set in a scenic Durban nature reserve. This week, our location is home to Geraldine and Colin Payton, one which, after a lifetime of travel with their family, has proven their ultimate destination, a place built of adventure, culture, memories and experiences that have made their children who they are today. Nestled in a nature reserve with a view of the Indian Ocean, Geraldine and Colin Payton's home is an African Balinese-style refuge. Their work in the water engineering business influenced the home's eco-friendly design that includes solar panels for energy efficiency. Welcome to Durban. Thank you. When I arrived in the suburbs of Durban, I must say, I didn't expect to see such a beautiful vintage car. Really? Isn't it amazing? It belongs to my husband, Colin. He found it in this little town in the Free State called Lady Bran. And it belonged to this old gentleman on a farm called Wim Arbery. Sure. It's beautiful. And yeah. your home, this, this entrance. Can Thanks, we talk Roxy. about this entrance? This is quite dramatic and beautiful. Geraldine, not only is this entrance magnificent, the door is spectacular, but this fish pond is something pretty special. 
It really is. It's one of our special places to be in the summer months. The sun comes through here. The fish are so tranquil. They swim around. They uh, love eating lettuce. It's one of their favorite uh, things to eat. Vegetarian fish. Vegetarian <laughs> fish, I'm afraid. And uh, the pool's actually quite deep, and that's what allows the fish to grow as big as they are. Completing the tranquil entrance is the specially crafted, authentic wooden masterpiece. Colin and I went to Zanzibar and um, found somebody to carve it down little alleyways in Stone Town. Eventually found this man, tried through sign language to show him exactly what we wanted. And uh, yeah, it took us a year to get the door. Oh, wow. But uh, eventually it did arrive and I think it was well worth the wait. It's absolutely beautiful. The attention to detail is just exquisite. All hand carved by one man. I love how the archway and the border of this beautiful window mirrors the door that we see behind us. The border that you see around here was made by the same gentleman that made uh, the door. It's airy, it's breezy, and it's so tranquil. Yeah, this is our favorite spot in the house. And uh, the fact that uh, you have this beautiful window here just extends the entrance hall right out into the garden. And I think it's really peaceful and tranquil. It's a holiday feeling, but right at home. Wow, Geraldine, this takes open plan living to a whole new level. It's exquisite, and this floor, this is a feature in and of itself. They are, Roxy, they're absolutely beautiful. The entire house is Rhodesian teak, but it really creates a beautiful, warm atmosphere in the house. Geraldine and Colin love traveling over land and say there isn't a place in South Africa they haven't explored. Via these adventures, they've picked up an eclectic art collection. On our travels, we've collected all sorts of little knicky-knacky things, and I think that's what makes this home unique. It's a family home, it's lived in, there are no rules here with decorating. It just is what it is. It works, I think it works. You can tell me what you think. It most definitely works. While the inside of the house serves as a virtual scrapbook of their travels, it's the great outdoors surrounding it that acts as the real scene stealer. Set in a nature reserve, it's not unusual to spot wildlife while sitting next to the pool. Oh, this feels like the icing on a very beautifully well-decorated cake. Roxy, this is what motivated Colin and I to buy this property. When we came here and saw this magnificent view, we phoned our architect and we said to him, Jimmy, there's two things. We want to turn this house around. And the other thing is we want to create our holiday home at home. Well, the Payton's architect, Jimmy Velasariu, did a stellar job of capitalizing on the view, their landscaper, Jan Block, was briefed to create a garden that acted as an extension of the nature reserve and features lots of water. There's no better place to look at this magnificent view than from this beautiful space that we have out here. We decided to go for these colors because they mix in nicely with the environment, the swimming pool, the blues, the turquoises, the greens. Look at this interesting light that we have here. There's a story behind that too, it comes from a place called Lady Brand, and it's from Mud Studios. And the owner of Mud Studios actually makes porcelain clay, and then the clay that's used up, he gives to the local ladies, and they roll it up into little balls and sell it back to him. He then makes these interesting chandeliers that get sent all over the world. The Payton's home is the kind of space where everywhere you look, you'll be sure to find an intriguing piece with an interesting story to go with it. While some of the paintings are by prolific local artists like Louis Ardy and Rob McIntosh, a few are by Geraldine herself. The bedrooms take full advantage of the view from upstairs. Oh, this is like a breath of fresh air as soon as you walk in here. I should have known that this was gonna be like a personal oasis. So you like it? Oh, love it. If you have a look over there, you'll see the bath. And the reason why we put the bath there is because in the evenings, you can actually open that window completely and there's a sliding window that opens. So it really is so wonderful to be there. Then you see this area at the back of you where we have the basins and we have a walk-in cupboard. So because of the beautiful ocean that you see outside, we decided to stay with the same palette in this room and just stuck to blues and greys and whites. And I think it works quite well. 
This is a home made for the family at its heart. And Geraldine's children, triplets, Justin, Coral and Matthew and stepdaughter Candy are home for dinner. Justin, I see we find you by the fire. Have you inherited your love of making fires from your dad? He is. He makes some mean fires. So, um, yeah, it's become a regular thing. Every night we make uh, massive fires. Have you made special memories in this house? There's memories everywhere you look here. I mean, my parents have been all over Africa, and if you ask a story about anything, they've got stories to share about everything that, that is lying in this house. So, Carl, having spent the day with your mom, I can tell that she's full of energy, full of love, and she's so creative and talented. What was it like growing up with her? She's my best friend, Rox. I mean, you spent the day with her. It's hard not to be inspired. I can only hope to be like her someday. Hey, you guys started without me. Yay! Hey, Maddie, Roxy, Matt's the third triplet. So, Matt, I have a very serious question for you. Who is the favorite triplet? <laughs> That's a hard question. I don't really have a favorite, to be honest. I love my brother and sister both as much. <laughs> not your favorite. <laughs> Thank you, sis. And you've taken over the head of the table this evening? Yeah, I am. I'm taking over this evening. My dad's on away on business at the moment, but uh, this is my seat tonight. He's usually sitting right here with a nice drink in front of him. Uh, he's a very inspirational person. He's full of fun. Always got a joke up his sleeve. Loves to make fire and uh, yeah, he's uh, someone everyone should look up to. Well, cheers to Colin and many more memories to be made. Cheers. 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 Cheers indeed to a beautiful family and their just as beautiful home. Have you spotted our top hat yet? If so, 1,000 Rand could be yours to start a journey. Buy a cookbook, maybe two. Get something special for your house or your kids. You decide. To enter, reply to our Facebook or Twitter competition posts. Next, a scandalous wedding on set for SABC3's High Rollers. Yes, we do love weddings on top billing and being spring, we open the wedding season with a real spectacle from SABC3's hit show, High Rollers. There's a dress by Gert Johan Kutsia, a blushing bride, celebrity guest list and of course, drama. It's time for showgirl character Tallulah Nichols to tie the knot with casino heir Ben King. So only the best dress will do. Enter the celebrity designer. Kat, this is another typically beautiful creation from you, made specifically for this wedding. Yes. Correct? Not yes. from a collection. This no. is custom made for Tallulah's wedding. Yes, we definitely wanted Tallulah to look like the star that she is, and, and, and really she's marrying into money, and it had to look that way. So, <laughs> um, of course, she is pregnant, so it was quite interesting to work around that and, and to make a, a, a maternity wedding dress that can also be converted into a normal one. Now, obviously, designing a wedding dress for a show as opposed to a bride in real life, so to speak, is, is the same. There's no difference. The it's process. exactly the same process. We do a first consultation, of course. Um, we didn't do the consultation with Hayley, we did the consultation with Tallulah, the character, to really see what her whole ideas and her looks and feel is, and also work with the wardrobe department of the show to see that we really capture her look. Would Tallulah be happy with this dress? Would Hayley be happy with this dress? Are they now the same person? To be honest, this is very classy for Tallulah. <laughs> very, very classy. This is going to show the better side of Tallulah. I think she's really trying hard to fit in with the King family, so she's really trying to step it up a notch. If it was Tallulah's choice, it would probably end about here, and um, it would probably go as low as about here. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really something beautiful to make Tallulah's day yeah, extra special for Ben. But Kat, you're so well known for all the little details that you add to dresses and on closer inspection there are many of them. Can you take us through so, some of the favorite ones on this dress? So for me, like Hailey was saying, is that we really wanted Tallulah to really look very classy in this dress. So of course nothing is classier than pearls. The big trend of weddings at the moment is this transparent feel. So it almost looks like it's nude, but it's not. And then the lace is applied on top. So it's a beautiful symmetrical lace. And it was hand embellished with, with pearls and small Swarovski crystals. And then also dripping down into the gown. And when it's finished, it's going to be absolutely glowing. While it's the bride's big day to shine, the bridesmaids' dresses are also beautifully detailed showstoppers. I don't know about you, but I'm loving the options so far. If anyone knows how to dress so a woman, it's Kat, right? Of course, Definitely. of course. Yeah. Every girl loves a tutu, and the yeah. workmanship up here and with these beads is absolutely That's gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. The detailing is incredible. 
Absolutely. Um, I think Linky would prefer the sexy version though. Yeah, this is a bit too sexy for Tandy. Yeah, um, maybe we should swap. Yeah, yeah. Your characters are not happy about this wedding happening at all. There's a lot of scandal a lot. around this wedding right now. Um, Tolula is not pregnant. My character knows it. Everybody else doesn't, so it's a very difficult position to be in because obviously as a bridesmaid, you're supporting the bride, which we are not. Mm, definitely not. I mean, but my character, family, she's just trying to protect her brother. She knows Tallulah's definitely trying to steal all the money. While Tallulah's bridesmaids might be well aware of her devious scheming, Ben the groom, played by actor Filier Moritz, is none the wiser as to his bride's big plans to get her money-hungry hands on his wealthy family's cash. Ben King, you're looking so dapper. Are you ready for the big day? Very ready. I was actually quite, quite stressed over the weekend, ready enough. I mean, it's, a, it's not a real, real wedding, you know. And um, I was staying home, I was behaving myself. I even got some moisturizer going and all that. I was going to say, look at you being all modern man over here. What do you think it is about Tallulah that attracted Ben in the first place? Because they do come from very different worlds. Well, I think what happened is, well, Ben fell for one night and they had a bit of a thing going, but he knew that it it wasn't going to work out, it was going to go for Esme. But at the end of the day, reality kicks in, she fell pregnant with his child, and um, this child means a lot to him, and he, he's going to make this work, uh, even if he knows it's not the right woman for him, so yeah. Esme's not supposed to be at the wedding, so things are a little awkward? Yes, uh, quite a bit awkward. She is the ex-wife of Ben, and there's quite a bit of history because um, they have wanted to raise Tallulah's baby themselves, and that has kind of backfired. And so it's quite a big surprise when she arrives. And I think that's great television and great story. Because what is Ben gonna do? There is still this love connection between the two of them, but there's also this relationship with Tallulah that has developed. And so it's kind of a choice between the two blondes. The High Rollers team didn't have a difficult decision to make when it came to picking a wedding venue. Oakfield Farm was a natural choice with beautiful surroundings enhanced by the talented team. Robbie, was it a challenge for you as a set dresser to work in consultation with a wedding planner to create a fake wedding? Well, that was a bit of an experience. Um, if you know Zavion, he's character. But um, we worked well together. We came up with a color palette. We came up with a look and design and feel. And with Zavion's experience, we put that together and this is what we have. I'm assuming as a wedding planner, this was a first for you because you were now part of the props <laughs> department and the set dresses. Yeah, it was a first for me. Um, I must say it's quite contrasting from a normal wedding because you've got to keep the flowers alive constantly. Whereas a wedding is just one day, this is over four days, which was quite hectic. And how does this wedding compare to what's currently on trend? Well, we run on trend with all of the colours. It's definitely a palette that they, they chose, which is quite uh, stylish, except for the peach. Um, I believe the character is quite a tacky bride. So we had to throw it in there just to make it look a little bit more like the character's taste, but I really love doing it and the overly sized floral arrangements are beautiful and I just love this wedding, it was really cool. But not for everyone. So your character's not too happy about this wedding happening? Uh, no, definitely not. Um, he's been doing his best to, to split the two apart for as long as he can. He doesn't like Tallulah at all, he thinks uh, she's quite common and a bit of a gold digger. She's only after my son for the cash and his trust fund. So he's done his best to split them apart, but he's been outwitted by her at every turn. Despite Ben's dad's best efforts, this deliciously scandalous wedding must go on. <laughs> Top billings Roxy Berger and Jonathan Boynton Lee are amongst the guests. Thank you. It <laughs> wasn't as scary as you thought it would be. What do you think? Not for her, maybe. Oh, don't you lie now, Ben King. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Rafi Berger and Jonathan Boynton Lee. Can I please have the couple come through now, please? Josh, you got some director's notes for us? Yeah. Nail it. You guys were all right. I might recast you sometime. You know? <laughs> no, it was great. You got you both really natural, I think, because of uh, being on camera a lot. So, yeah, well done. Very challenging role playing that Jonathan Boynton Lee oak. <laughs> so good looking. <laughs> It's awesome to be a director on a show which is very rich, very filmic and very cinematic. Yeah, High Rollers is just a show that we think sets the bar higher than a lot of the other dramas in South Africa. Being more cinematic, having a fantastic cast and the fact that we're set in a casino allows us to explore the darker underbelly of the gambling world as well as the glitz and the glamour and it's just a wonderful world people want to see more of. To see more of this wedding, don't miss High Rollers on the 7th of September for a mega dose of petals pearls and possibly a twist to the plot.
That is the best of the good life for this Thursday. We hope your weekend is one to remember. And until the same time next week and a world of different places. Good night, everyone, and God bless. Join us again next Thursday as Nico meets Ilsa Hayes, the Paralympian making us proud. Leon Nevote works out with top international model David Agbaji in New York. Sophie star Clint Brink invites us to his wedding to Namibian model Steffi van Veik. And Roxy gets whipped into shape by Instagram fitness bunny Svati Mpisani.